So hi everyone, my name is Matt and I'm sitting here with Lorenzo today. Lorenzo is the creator of the Sexability Coach Training, is the founder of Sexability and the director of the Sexability Festival and is a dear friend and uh, we are co-creating different things in life together. And uh, we want to talk today about uh, consent and how consent uh, fits into facilitation and how to avoid mistakes and make uh, your sessions and your workshops really safe for your participants and clients. Who are you then, Matt? Maybe I could say that you are um, the founder of the Somatic Consent uh, training and so, uh, the whole thing about Somatic Consent, author of this book. Um, Orgasmic Blueprint is the name. Right. <laughs> and you are the one that um, uh, mentioned the word consent and that work for me uh, the first time I heard about it. Um, it was like 2013 or I think it was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so we want to talk about kind of on a casual level about consent and we had at the last Sexability Festival, you had a workshop and we had some uh, talks about that, why consent is important when it comes to workshops, uh, how to um, conduct a session that is based on consent and uh, how it is needed in the world of facilitation mm -hmm. for practitioners and uh, space holders to create an environment. And uh, I was a participant in your workshop at the Sexability Festival for um, people who are actually holding space for other people and uh, that was uh, very enlightening for many people and I really enjoyed being there and mm -hmm. um, maybe just like want to wrap up how you have been talking there about consent for professionals and uh, uh, what your topic insights are. Yes, it's basically about like sharing the my experience and the journey about the consent work and what I call the consent-based facilitation. And um, for me, when I come across the consent uh, work at the first time, it, it, um, I felt like I suddenly have a language that I could describe things, talk to other people, discuss things. So that I before only had like an experience in my body. So that is one thing that you as a facilitator understand that not even, not just having an experience in your body uh, and trying to um, share that experience with participants, but also there is a language you can use in order to explain things and make it more clear. And there's also an understanding and awareness that um, is much more about just consent to people saying yes to something. Mm -hmm. It's the understanding behind it. And, and this is what we were talking about. And um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, the idea is about this conversation that we want to have to just like give people some value and enrich their understanding. Why is it so important? Mm -hmm. So the first piece about consent is that uh, the main sentence, who is doing the action and mm -hmm. who that action is for. So this is a topic and why this is important for a practitioner and a facilitator mm -hmm. and that the kind of the um, general misunderstanding about consent, that consent is more than just saying yes to something and mm. then doing something. Mm. It's more like really understanding what are you saying yes to, yes. Um, that you're finding a deeper layer of understanding and embodiment of that. Yes. And then the third part is that at the festival we have kind of seen that so many participants and uh, volunteers at the festival site at Engsbacher they know already a lot about consent because we teach there as well to the volunteers and to the participants a lot of consent that some of the facilitator and workshop leaders not getting mm. so that the, the the participants in workshops they know partly more than the facilitator and we want to talk about that how um, uh, participants will call out facilitator if they don't speak the language of consent. <laughs> yes, 
I think that's fun because it's spreading, you know, uh, over the years this um, awareness is spreading. And in, in Engsbacka, they have um, um, workshops around consent before every festival with the um, volunteers. So a lot of volunteers that also participating in the workshops, they, they have been to several workshops. And also there is a lot of people now understanding this um, work and this language. And if a facilitator is not using this language, there will, pe will be people reacting. And I think it's important that um, facilitators is at least coming up to the same, same level as the, the one that they are teaching. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it's an interesting topic, specifically for me as a facilitator as well, and teaching consent for so many years. And we had the conversation, we combining over 25 years of experience yeah. as facilitator and facilitator teacher and uh, mm. uh, um, educator for practitioner. Mm. And But specifically, I'm super picky when I go to a workshop, mm. you know, when the, and I have been in a few workshops at the festivals. Mm. And when the facilitator doesn't have the language in the right place and when they constantly say, I want you to do this and I want you to do that. And yeah. when they're not getting the real context about giving and receiving and then instead of giving people the choice about the experience that they want to have, mm. I need to leave. Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. It had happened to, for me also. I'm, I'm, I'm normally choose to, to stay. <laughs> <laughs> but I I could feel like how it feels in my body like um, and I I as you said like when the facilitator said now I want you to and if you heard that like 20 times during the workshop it's like yes could you now tell us like help us to find out what we want you mm -hmm. know or is this a workshop for you where you want us to be in this certain and certain way? And sometimes you could feel like they have like a hidden agenda where they think that, okay, so this participant coming to my workshop and before they came to my workshop, they were feeling this and this. And after two hours or whatever this workshop is, they will now feel something else. Mm. Uh, so there's like a plan and an agenda of the the facilitator um, or the teacher of the workshop, the workshop leader have, and you realize that in the end many times when, when they say like, and now when we all feel this love together here, it's like, oh, so that was the agenda here, like, um, and that is not so good when the, you, especially if you don't feel the same thing that you're supposed to feel mm -hmm. and you feel something else and you feel even more like bad because like you have your emotion but everybody else seems to have uh, some kind of experience here and i'm the only one that doesn't have that and you feel even worse maybe worse than you were feeling before the workshop mm -hmm. because you think there's something wrong with you, you know, instead of having the experience that like whatever I feel is okay. It's my truth and it's my feelings and and get some help of getting deeper into what I want to experience. Um, which is the actually if you're talking about facilitation is the definition of it is to make things easier mm. so you are helping a participant to have to to easier have the experience that they want to have mm. that's facilitation yeah. Yeah. yeah comparing to like teaching someone or being the, the the advisor or whatever yeah or the typical guru teaching sitting on the yeah. pedestal and telling people what's right and wrong what mm. to do what not to do and, mm. and people that do something and following mm. without actually having the choice of an embodied experience and um, yeah so i would like to have a just short view on that why is it so important that consent is not about only saying yes and saying no or saying yes to something and then going into any action. Mm -hmm. So why is it so important that we have the entire structure of consent in place 
that we literally really know what we are saying yes to yes. and have an, 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 an empowered choice and an informed choice about the experience. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. For me, like when I first heard about consent, it was like, okay, how hard can it be? Two people saying yes to what's going on. But the, the work uh, is about having awareness of what actually is going on. And I sometimes th feel, think about it like if you have a, like an app or something and they have an update and you say like, okay, do you agree on this update and the condition for this program or app? And you say like, yes, but you have not really re read it. You don't really know what you're saying yes to. And when it comes to an app, that might not be so important. But if you have an interaction with someone, an intimate reaction, interaction or like a sexual interaction, then it's more important, like, what am I actually saying yes to? Do I know that? Do I know what the other person mean with, do you want massage? What's is included in that mm -hmm. kind of thing? What does the other person mean with that? For Is it for... The other person is it for me or is it something we share together or what's the purpose is it like a friendly massage is it a sensual massage is it a sexual massage is this going to lead somewhere do i know what i want and how do i know what i want how how where do i access these answers like mm. where do i um, feel like yes This is how it feels in my body when I want something and this is how it feels when I don't want that. How do I know that? How can I be, become better at that? How can I become better at communicating what I'm feeling and understanding myself, the other person, the communication? And, and this is like, you know, almost like a lifetime journey to get like deeper into that awareness of these things. Mm. Um, And this is what it's about. Yeah. Not just saying yes to something, but understanding what am I saying yes to. Yeah. I, I love personally this, this very aspect of the um, empowerment or the embodiment of empowerment, if you want to say yes. so. What, you know, when people know what consent is and when they have this, you know, craftsman's ship skill of communicating mm. and when they know and how to communicate that this is not only an experience they have in a workshop and then they say well I have had an amazing workshop and then they're trying to repeat something but don't know what mm. but when they have the understanding how to formulate and articulate that mm. that this is a repeatable capability of having experience that you choose to have wherever in life so that you take that from a place as a as a nugget, as a diamond, as gold with mm. you, when you know what you say yes to. That's my experience. Yeah. Yes. And as you said, like when you have embodied, you feel it, you it's not like a mental thing. You you know you as a facilitator you speak from an experience. It's not something you have read in the book, but you have practiced it, so you are speaking from from your body more than from from your mind, so to say. Yeah. Um, and this is a, a practice, a training, and um, yes, and as what you are calling the the somatic consent, I, I really like that. That the the consent work is like a somatic. It's an experience. It's an embodied experience and from that experience you have a consensual interaction so the somatic consent i I'm, i really like that yeah me too yes <laughs> <laughs> okay so there was a short kind of introduction why it is important for a practitioner and facilitator having the consent skills in place mm -hmm. there's so much more to talk about that and yeah. uh, uh, i hope you just had some benefits out of that and take some nuggets Uh, with you why it is so important to have consent embodied as a practitioner and facilitator and uh, would you like to say a last word? Yeah, so I think that like, as a facilitator um, to, to, as you said, have it embodied, uh, to have an experience of it, the consent work and also have the awareness what's going on between people and also have the language So you could feel it in your body, 
you can communicate it out to other people and and from that that part that place you you teach mm. Mm. all right thank you so much and, and if thank you just you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you <laughs> and if you want to know more about what we're cooking up we have in november 10th till 14th a workshop coming up in stockholm so five day this is a professional mastery Uh, for a practitioner, facilitator, and everybody who want to dive deeper into consent and make your profession more solid and um, fundamental, then uh, please reach out, uh, uh, check the webpage. There's probably a link somewhere here around that video. And uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out at any time and um, see you there. Yes. Bye. Bye.